I saw Oddity. This is a new Shutter original from director Dan McCarthy. This is only his second movie, I believe. But, you know, I saw this movie was getting a little bit of hype among horror fans. I've heard some people talk about it. So I checked it out. It was available to rent, not just on Shutter. But, um, yeah, th- this is one of those... I-, I did like this movie. I thought it was doing some interesting things. I don't think it necessarily stuck the landing or was this new revolutionary thing in horror. Excuse me. Ooh, that's a seltzer. But from what I understand, um, this movie is similar to Damian McCarthy's first movie in a lot of ways. In fact, I think there's a direct Easter egg to his first movie in this one. Um, The gist of what I understand about this movie and his first movie is Damian McCarthy has made these horror movies basically where the villain is an inanimate object that is right out in the open. It's not something that is lurking in the shadows. It is in the foreground of these scenes in these movies. So the plot of this movie is basically um, you get this old Victorian house uh, where this woman is murdered in. Um, This is just in the beginning. And her husband is a doctor at a psych ward um, nearby. I, I don't even really know what country this is supposed to take place in, but it's Clearly not America, maybe London or something like that. Uh, but yeah, they, they live in this house um, out in the country. Uh, Victorian old castle-like house. It's just like a big square with a courtyard in the middle. Um, and basically, uh, the sister of the woman that got murdered comes back to the house to visit the husband Um, And the sister is this blind um, owner of an antique shop in the city where she collects and sells haunted inanimate objects. And she believes she's kind of like a psychic. Again, she's blind. She believes that she can communicate with these haunted objects. And only when people purchase her items from her store do the curses get lifted. So that's an interesting. I like that. That was that was kind of cool, like a cool little concept for a horror movie, but not really about that. Basically, she can she has some connection with the supernatural world and these supernatural haunted objects, uh, cursed objects. So, um, yeah, and then you learn a little bit more. There's stuff revealed about what happened to the sister's murder. Um, you know, uh, the sister is interacting with the, um, the husband's new new girlfriend, in the house, and things ensue from there. Not a very long movie, only an hour and a half, but it it gets across a lot in that hour and a half runtime, and again, not a lot of locations, mainly just taking place in this house, specifically only one big open room of this house, and just pretty much cutting back to the husband when he's at his job in the psych ward, almost just exclusively in his office. So, which which I really liked. I thought that when scripts can do a lot with a little in terms of location. I think that's really cool. The interesting thing about this movie is a couple of things other than, you know, there's the aspect of there's this inanimate object of a giant life-size wooden man that looks creepy as hell that she brings to the house when she visits the sister. That's, again, it's just in the foreground the entire movie. It's just this creepy object and it's just there staring at you. So it does create some creepy things. Um, but what I actually really thought was interesting about this movie is the dynamics between the characters. Now, this is presented as a very quote-unquote mature horror movie. You know, it's one of those, um, I don't know how to put it. It's it's not a slasher. You know, you have slasher movies where the fun is just watching the killer go after all the kids in the house, you know, and they all have it coming to them, you know. Um, but this movie is more like your A24 kind of sophisticated horror movie. All of the characters, the, the women wear these knit sweaters, these 
these very um, fall colored dark knit sweaters. That's always something I notice in these horror movies, the costume design. Uh, but what I thought was really interesting about this movie is the sister, the blind one, who's, you know, whose sister got killed in the beginning. I'm kind of on her side in this movie. In most horror movies that aren't slashers, the victims are the ones that you are supposed to be sympathetic towards. But the victims, the, the husband and his girlfriend in this movie are pretty much scumbags from start to finish. They talk down to the sister. They don't want to deal with her. They're rude. They kind of seem like they have it coming to them. Even though I'm not spoiling anything, things don't exactly turn out the way you think. But I did think that was a really interesting way they played these dynamics between these three characters. The weird, uh, you know, psychic connected person to these haunted objects is kind of the one I was rooting for, even though she's the one bringing these supernatural elements and peril onto these two characters. I'm kind of rooting for her. And I don't know. I don't know if that was the movie's intentions. It might have been. I think Damian McCarthy, maybe his intentions were, were to kind of let you choose. It wasn't... I don't want to say he wasn't telling me who to root for, because that's the thing. I, I guess if I had some criticism with these dynamics that I thought were interesting, the husband... And the girlfriend are such massive pieces of shit to the sister. You, you, you just kind of, you just kind of know, like, okay, we're supposed to hate them. But I wish this movie presented that a little bit differently. I think this would have been much more interesting if the the girlfriend and the husband were a little bit more sympathetic throughout the movie to the sister character. I think that would would have been much more interesting. But in the events and what's revealed, you know, and throughout the movie, I'm kind of on the side of the sister. You're hoping she gets down to the to the mystery of the murder of her sister, you know? Um, so I think that was the most interesting thing this movie had to offer. As far as where it goes and what happens in the last half hour in the third act, that gets a little less interesting. You bring in another character. You get the reveals of what actually happened and what's really going on. I just don't think it nails that third act. I think everything it set up until then was pretty good. And then by the end, you're kind of just going through the motions of your typical horror movie. So in that sense, I don't think it does anything really that revolutionary. But again, I, I do think the setup and those character dynamics were the most interesting. Um, you know, and some cool imagery. I thought the wooden uh, figure statue guy was, was creepy. You know, I don't think it's the most, I don't think it's the scariest movie. I think there is some scenes when you do flashbacks and reveal of what actually happened to this woman. I thought it was done really effectively. And I think this is a movie that, again, didn't have a lot of resources. It looks great. It's shot great. But again, mainly just in these two locations, in just these rooms. Um, and then when there's actually action that happens, most of it, if not all of it, is not shown. And again, some a lot of movies do this where it's just implied. I think the way that they capture it was just shot really well. I like the way that they that they did cutting around the more gory stuff in this movie. Um, so yeah, but again, I just you know the the ending wasn't great. Uh, not a whole lot of recognizable actors in this movie. Yeah, um, but the woman, um, Carolyn Bracken, who played the blind sister, she was great. Um, everyone else was just fine, you know. Um, if anything, I would like to see what Damian McCarthy does next. Next, I like his vibe with this idea of, you know, putting the real horror object on the poster in the foreground. 
and just having it lurk there the entire time in a very creepy way. I think that's a cool original idea. But I just think he needs to find a he needs to find a better way to incorporate that into a story. Other than that, I thought this movie was just good. Wasn't great. Um but again, not without that really interesting concept and approach to a horror movie. So, yeah, that's Oddity. Um, I know it's streaming on Shutter, and it's available to rent if you want to check it out. So, Oddity. Oddity. <laughs>